Hi, I'm Janelle Mutu, Senior Labor Officer at the Department of Labor and Pensions, known as DLP for short. The DLP is here to ensure that Cayman's labor and pensions laws are complied with, and we believe compliance starts with education. Today we'll focus on the main functions of the DLP's labor unit and some need-to-know info for your career journey. But before we get there, it is important for you to know that all Caymanian employees between 18 and 65 years of age, including self-employed persons, must contribute to a pension plan. For non-Caymanians, pension becomes payable after nine months of employment in the Cayman Islands. There are a few exceptions. Caymanians under the age of 23 who are pursuing full-time education and non-Caymanian and non-permanent resident household domestics. The minimum pension contribution for the employee is 5% of their earnings up to a year's maximum pensionable earnings of CI $87,000. So you're on your way to securing your next job. When you do land that offer, you and your new employer will need to put the terms of your employment relationship in writing. Section 6 of the Labor Law requires your employer to issue you what's called a Statement of Working Conditions. This statement sets out your job title, your wage or salary, your hours of work, and amongst other details, your probationary period. Probation is a trial period, during which time you and your employer have a chance to explore whether you found a long-term fit. During the probationary period, which must be agreed in writing, either party can end the employment relationship with only 24 hours notice. While the initial period must not exceed six months, probation may be extended by a further written agreement for up to an additional six months. Keep in mind that it is not until the confirmation of your employment after your probationary period that all benefits under the labor law shall be deemed to have accrued from the commencement of the probationary period. So what does that mean? It means that while you are earning benefits from day one of the job, you are not entitled to those benefits, like paid leave, while on probation. Now let's fast forward a few months. You've performed well through your training period and you're enjoying your new job. You've completed probation and now your benefits will kick in. When it comes to time off, the labor law sets out a minimum annual entitlement for vacation, sick and maternity leave. During the first four years of employment, you are entitled to two weeks vacation leave per year, three weeks after four years employment, and four weeks once you have completed 10 years. It's important to note that during any 12-month period, you're actually earning your leave as you go. For example, you began a new job in January, and your statement of working conditions offers you two weeks vacation leave. If it's now July, you've only completed half of the year or six months employment, so you're only entitled to one week vacation leave. By December, you will have earned or accrued your full two-week entitlement. Every employee who has passed probation is also entitled to 10 days paid sick leave per year. Remember, sick leave is only to be taken in connection with actual illness or incapacitation for work. Section 17.3 of the law does allow your employer to ask you for a doctor's note for any sick leave request, and employees must provide a doctor's note whether or not it has been requested if three or more sick leave days are being taken. Sick leave must not be prorated and runs in tandem with the anniversary date rather than the calendar year. In case an employment relationship is no longer working out, the law guides both parties, employee and employer, on what steps to take to terminate the relationship. The first step is to give notice. Unless your signed contract calls for a longer notice period, you or your employer should give the other party notice that is equal to the interval of time between pay periods. For example, if you are paid every two weeks and you wish to resign, you must inform your employer two weeks prior to the effective date of your resignation that you will be leaving your post. The department recommends that this notice is given in writing. If your employer dismisses you after you have completed a year of employment, you may be eligible for a severance payment. 
Severance consists of one week's wages at your latest basic wage for each completed year of employment. But in the case where your employer terminates you for misconduct or for performance, notice and severance may not be applicable. You may refer to sections 52 and 53 of the law for more information on unfair dismissal or dismissal for cause. The DLP is here to ensure that the labor and pensions laws are being observed and your rights under these laws are being protected. We would be happy to answer any questions on any labor or pensions matters that you may have. You can visit the department at Midtown Plaza on Elgin Avenue, visit our website, or give us a call at 945-8960 for more information.